and these numbers are not small. Uh, for, for folks that are living at or below the poverty line, if you can boost your income by $10,000, that helps your kids significantly. Or if you're a senior and you're not applying for all that you're entitled to, uh, you could very well pull yourself out of poverty or, or maybe afford a better uh, you know, a rental accommodation or whatever it is. So uh, getting the message out there is, is, is really a, a particular problem. That's always been the barrier to getting this done. But to, uh, you know, to, to point at the, the low-hanging fruit here for people that are in poverty, I mean, there's much more that we need to do, but this mm -hmm. is one that they can do, that they can help themselves with by just applying and getting the, uh, the entitlements that they're uh, entitled to that are sitting there waiting for them. We don't need a program to approve this. It doesn't have to go to city council or to some federal government. It's approved. It's waiting for them to file. The moment they file, they're eligible, they get the money. Yeah. Pretty simple. Several of us have knocked on doors and have heard those stories. People living just by that Ontario Works mm -hmm. check or on their ODSP. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you raised seniors because they aren't necessarily aware of these programs either and the credits due to them. Right. Exactly. And I think seniors and single moms would be just, it would make such an impact in our community. Oh, absolutely. Particularly around the guaranteed income supplement for seniors who are, who are at or near the poverty line. and the fact that they can apply for this additional income through their income tax and it will hopefully lift them up above the poverty line. Uh, seniors as a group because of the guaranteed income supplement are actually the group that's seeing the biggest improvement in poverty reduction in Canada. Um, so we're hoping with the advent of the Canada Child Benefit we'll start to see a similar reduction in child poverty not just here in Hamilton uh, but right across the country. But as the mayor has indicated, it really does need to go hand in hand with other proactive policies. And that's why I'm so thrilled that the mayor has brought forward a $50 million poverty investment strategy um, that's going to be discussed this week that I, I think will also go towards ensuring that those who are the most vulnerable in our community can get housed and, and start moving out of poverty as well. Can I, can I pick up on your first point? Because uh, you know many people may not know where the Rolston neighborhood is. Mm -hmm. It's on the mountain. And you know, there's poverty. Uh, not just on the mountain. I live or in the Wilston neighborhood, <laughs> and until and until I began working at an agency, I did not realize the extent of poverty in my neighborhood. And most people do not, and most people don't appreciate the fact that there's poverty in Ancaster, there's poverty mm -hmm. in Dundas, there's poverty in Waterdown. It, uh, it's not it's not a lower city issue, although it's slightly it's higher in the in the lower inner city. It is throughout our entire community. So the, for those that are thinking, you know what? doesn't impact me or my community. No, it impacts all of our communities. The entire city is struggling with this. It's our collective responsibility to find a way of improving on the, uh, the, the work that's been done, and much has been done, to be fair. But at some point, it does become about the money. You know, the argument is always, that, well, it's not about the money. You need to give them, you know, tools to help themselves. That's true. We're doing that in many different ways. Neighborhood action plans, uh, uh, assistance in school, after school programs. There's all kinds of things happening out there. But at some point, it does become about giving them the, uh, the opportunity to have stable housing, uh, enough supports that they, uh, they don't have to make a choice between food and housing, and that they, uh, they have enough income to actually support their children in, a, in a, uh, a respectful way. And I think everybody would want that. And I think the community at large said, I think at the last election, about 80% of the population said, poverty's probably the first priority for our city. City Matters at noon, 4, 6, and 10 p.m. on Cable 14, and anytime on Cable14now.com.